Hello friends and welcome to edusathi.com. Today we'll be covering the topic of simple interest and compound interest. So let me go through what will be the agenda of this presentation. We'll be starting with some of the basic terms that are used in case of simple interest and compound interest. We'll look at the types. We'll compare them. We'll look at the cases of non-annual compounding and we'll end up with the topic of simple annual growth rate and compounded annual growth rate also known as SHER and CHER. Now let's look at some of the basic terms which are very very important to the understanding of uh, simple interest and compound interest. The first one being the principal. So principal is basically the initial sum that is invested or the initial money that you start your investment with that is known as principal. Amount. Amount is basically the final money that you get after growth. So initial value, principal, final value, amount. Rate of interest. Rate of interest is basically the growth that is happening over the principal to give you your final amount. It is expressed in percentage term. That means how much increment has happened over the principal to give you your amount. Interest. Interest is the sum by which the principal increases. You have invested something initially and you've got your final amount. So the difference between the final amount and the initial principal is known as interest. That means your initial investment has increased with interest. Time period T it's the interval after which the growth is calculated. Generally it is in years. So let's get started and talk about the case of simple interest. Simple interest as the name suggests is very simple to understand and calculate. The interest in any time period is calculated as a percentage of the initial amount. This is the most important thing initial amount invested. So whatever is your initial investment over the years your interest will always be calculated on the initial investment. Whereas in the case of compound interest, the interest in any time period is calculated as a percentage of the amount outstanding. So if I just look at the initial amount and the amount outstanding at the start of the time period, that is basically the difference between simple interest and compound interest. The interest is on the initial principle all the time in case of simple, whereas the interest is on the amount that is at present there in case of a compound interest and it is not on the initial investment. Let's you know understand simple interest in a better way. So if I say simple interest for the first year, I'm talking about the first year, I'm getting an R percent rate, R percent rate, the rate is always on the initial principle that I've started with. So if I just calculate it, you know the rate is converted into fraction and multiplied with P, what is the rate for the first year? It will be written as PR by 100. That is the value that has been mentioned here. Now for a second year also, the rate that I will be getting will always be on the initial principle that I have started up with, which will not change over the due course of time. Third year also, the rate that I am calculating is on the initial principle and so on. So that means I need not calculate simple interest for every year separately. The simple interest for first year will be equal to the simple interest for second year will be equal to the simple interest for third year, for fourth year, for fifth year and so on. So if my investment horizon, if my investment horizon is for 10 years, for all the 10 years I will be getting an interest which is equal to PR by 100. Whatever was the rate of interest for the first, sorry, whatever was the interest for the first year, the same interest I will be getting for 10 years to follow. So simple interest remains same for every year as the principal and the rate of interest are not changing. So simple interest, this is the interest for one year. I am getting it for all the years, so I am multiplying it with T which is basically the number of years to give me a formula which is P into R into T by 100. P as we have already understood is principal which is you know in rupees. R is the rate of interest which is expressed in percentage per year. T is the number of years for which the investment has been done. 
in case the rates are varying every year it is not necessary that the rates would remain same in case the rates are varying obviously the simple interest would not remain same and it would vary around the years as well so the simple interest for first year will be calculated as rate on the initial principal for second year will be the rate for the second year on the initial principal now the thing that you need to notice is your initial principal would always remain the same so in this in this case the uh, the rates are not same so interest are not equal all through the years the total interest will be the sum of the individual interest of each year simple interest for one year simple interest for second year simple interest for third year the total simple interest would be the sum of all these uh, sum of all the interest now coming back to a concept that we have just learned amount amount is the final money that i get so amount would be equal to the initial principal that i started up with and the total interest that has been accumulated over the years in case r is constant for every year you know i hope you remember the formula now it is p into r into t by 100 this is the simple interest for one year multiplied with t years so as to you know uh, get the total simple interest and add it to the principal to give you your final amount that you will get in case r is different every year i'll calculate interest every year i'll add them to the principal and that i'll will get me my final amount let's you know uh, take an example let me suppose i started uh, with an initial amount of 1000 and the rate of interest was 10% by default if nothing is written we'll assume it's a per annum rate and i've invested 1000 rupees at a 10% rate for 4 years so year 1 i've invested 1000 rupees i would get 10% on 1000 so if i calculate my 10% on 1000 the interest that i am getting is 100 rupees so the simple interest for the first year is 100 added to my principal to give me my final amount at the end of one year as 1100 still in the second year if i look at it my principal would not be considered as 1100 though that is the money that is there in my account i will get the interest on 1000 only so if the principal is not changing and the rate of interest is not changing the simple interest would not change so simple interest for second year would still be 100 if i take out the money after 2 years i will have you know my principal for the first year simple interest for the first year and simple interest for the second year added into my account even for the third year the principal and the simple interest would not change for the fourth year the principal and the simple interest would not change my initial principal is the principal that is that is taken as the initial value for all the years so if i look at it simple interest for all the years if the rates are not changing and if the principal oh sorry if the rates are not changing would remain constant so i need not calculate simple interest for all the years one years is good enough for me if i compare the same case in a compound interest scenario look how the things change i started with initial principal of 1000 the rate was 10 years the time was 4 years for the first year obviously 1000 will be treated as my initial principal i will get rate on the initial principal that i started up with so 10% on 1000 comes up to 100 added into my account because this is the interest that i have earned for one year leading up to 1000 1100 in the second year I would not take thousand as the principal. Whatever is the amount in my account, whatever is the outstanding amount, will be treated as principal for the second year. It's like output of first is taken as input for second. Output of second will be taken as input of third. Something similar to the concept of successive percentage change that we have studied in the topic of percentage. So into this thousand, I add the interest. Now interest will be ten percent on eleven hundred. If I calculate ten percent on eleven hundred, it's one hundred and ten. This compound interest is added into my account, giving me a value of one two one zero. In the third year, one two one zero. which is the amount for the second year will be treated as principal i'll get interest of 10% on this and the final amount at the end of the third year is again then taken as a principal for the fourth year 10% on this amount adding up to a final value of 1461
Now, if you have noticed, the compound interest for all the years is not same. The compound interest is varying every year. Compound interest for first year will be the least. Second year higher. Third year even more higher. As we go on, the compound interest keeps on increasing because the principal value that that I am taking goes on increasing. If I compare both of them side by side, I have invested thousand rupees in both the cases at ten percent for four years. I look at the final amount in the first year. In the first year, the amount is same. The print, the you know, interest is also same. Reason being, the principal amount was the same. The difference starts from the second year. So if you have to invest for one year, you invested at SI or CI. It hardly matters because you will be getting ending up with the same amount. In the second year, it makes a difference. CI for second year is more than SI for second year. Reason solely being, the principal of CI is greater than the principal of SI. This difference goes on increasing as we move on. So let's look at the difference point of view. The first year, there's no difference as we have discussed. Second year, if you look at it, that there's a 10 rupee difference in this particular example, which increases to 31 in the third year and 64.1 in the fourth year. So imagine if you would have invested this for 20 years, there have been huge difference in case of compound interest and simple interest. So if you have to invest, obviously compound interest is always a better option because you get interest on the increased principal rather than on the initial principal that you have started with. Right? So if I now have to, you know, write down the compound thing in a formula, the formula for compound interest would be amount. That means the final value is equal to initial value into 1 plus r by 100 raised to power t. This t is basically the number of years, the number of years for which the investment is happening and r is your rate of interest for, you know, rate of interest in per annum, p is the principal and a is the amount. The simple thing that, you know, we have studied till now. So this formula, if you look at it, this formula is the formula that gives us gives us the value of the final amount depending upon the initial principle that you started with and the rate that you are getting per year. If you have to find out compound interest, you will obviously have to subtract amount and principle. So compound interest would be whatever is your final amount minus the initial principle that you started up with. If I write the formula for amount P into 1 plus R by 100 raised to power T minus P, this formula will be applicable when the rate is same for every year. That is why I am doing raised to power T because the rate is same for every year. In case the rate varies, I will not do this raised to power T. I will multiply the multiplying factor for different years. So basically, if you remember, we have done a concept of multiplying factors when we were doing our topic of percentage. What is 1 plus R by 100? This is the multiplying factor for year 1. Multiplied with the initial value gives me the final value for year 1. The final value for year 1 act as a principle for year 2. So this is your multiplying factor for year 2 applied on the initial value for year 2 to give you an answer of final value of year 2. The multiplying factor for year 3 applied on the initial value of year 3 which is actually equal to the final value of year 2 to give you your answer at the end of year 3 and so on. So this is basically the amount. Amount minus the principal, the initial principal that you started up with will give you your compound interest in a case where R varies every year. So if I have to now compare CI and SI for different years, I know obviously that CI for second year is greater than SI for second year and in the subsequent year, the difference will go on increasing only for the first year. CI for the first year is equal to SI for the first year and both of them can be equated to PR by 100. Whereas following years, the compound interest will always be greater than simple interest. Reason being my principal is more. So if I just you know uh, put the formulas and solve it out, I get this relationship. PR by 100 whole square. 
So that is a thing that needs to be remembered for the third year. Again, the principal for the third year, in case of compounding, will be much more than the principal for the uh, simple interest case. This is the compound interest for the third year, and this is the simple interest for three years. So if I subtract them, I'll get the formula, which gives me the difference between the compound interest and simple interest for three years. Uh, now let's look at some of the examples so that the concept becomes uh, even more clear to us. What is given to you in the question is simple interest for second year is 600, compound interest for second year is 660. Obviously there's a difference between you know compound interest for the second year and simple interest for the second year and this difference in this case comes out to be 60 rupees. I know the formula that 60 is equal to P R by 100 whole square. I've just learned the formula that it is this. It is this value equal to. The question is asking me find out the value of P and R. If I just go back to the concept, I know simple interest for first year will be equal to simple interest for second year, will be equal to simple interest for all the years and obviously this will also be equal to compound interest for first year which comes out to be 600. So if I look at it, if I look at it, the compound interest for first year was 600, the compound interest for second year is 660. So this 60 difference that I have, I if I just again use the formula, I'll split this formula like this, PR by 100, PR by 100. What is this value? This value is actually equal to the compound interest for first year or simple interest for first year or simple interest for second year which is actually what 600 600 into r by 100 is equal to 60 solving the equations you will get r is equal to 10 percent so the rate that is there every year is 10 percent if i put back the value of rate in this equation or oh sorry not in this equation in the initial equation that i have I will get my answer. So if I put 60 is equal to P, it is 10 by 100 whole square. The answer that I'll get 60 P, if you just solve the equations, it will be basically P into 1 by 100. So the value of P that you get is 6000. So if you start with 6000 rupees and you get an interest of 10% every year, your SI and CI would be the cases that have been given in an example. Let's look at another example. Uh, seventh year CI is 600 and eighth year CI is 660. Find R, find the rate. Basically, it's something like this. In the seventh year, you've got 600. In the eighth year, you've got 660. This 60 rupees is basically the difference that you have earned, right? If you, uh, if you would have understood the concept by now, the difference between the CI and SI is basically because I am getting interest on interest. So this 60 rupees difference is basically because of the interest on the compound interest for the first year. Solving the equations, I get R again equals to 10%. Now if I compare both the cases in one window, I would look at the principal in the first year remains the same. So if I calculate the simple interest or compound interest for the first year, it will come out to be same. Reason being the initial amount that is invested in both the cases is 1000. So if you have to invest for one year, you do it at SI or you do it at CI, it does not make a difference. But when we come into the second year, it makes a great amount of difference. The principal in case of SI is still 1000 whereas in case of CI the principal will be 1100. Now if I look at the compound interest, the compound year uh, interest is 110. This 110 compound interest is on 1100. If I break 1100 I can write it as 1000 plus 100. What is this 1000? This is the initial principal. This 100 is the first year interest. I get interest on this principle. So basically if I calculate 10% of 1000 will be 100. That is anyways there in case of simple interest and 10% on this additional 1000 contributes to the value of 10. So basically if I look at the difference which is there in compound interest and simple interest for second year which is 10 rupees. This 10 rupees is because of the interest on 
द सेकेंड ऑन द फर्स्ट ईयर इंटरेस्ट वी कॉल इट एज इंटरेस्ट ऑन इंटरेस्ट दिस इज द इंटरेस्ट ऑन द फर्स्ट ईयर इंटरेस्ट दैट यू हैव अक्रूड सिमिलरली इन द थर्ड ईयर दिस वन टू वन जीरो विच इज द ओरिजिनल प्रिंसिपल इज एक्चुअली योर थाउजेंड विच इज़ योर ओरिजिनल प्रिंसिपल प्लस हंड्रेड विच इज द इंटरेस्ट फॉर द फर्स्ट ईयर हंड्रेड एंड टेन विच इज द इंटरेस्ट फॉर द सेकेंड ईयर सो द इंटरेस्ट दैट यू आर गेटिंग ऑन दिस थाउजेंड विल बी हंड्रेड द डिफरेंस विच इज देयर द डिफरेंस विच इज देयर विच इज द डिफरेंस ऑफ इफ यू लुक एट इट द डिफरेंस विच इज देयर विच इज द डिफरेंस ऑफ थर्टी वन रुपीज थर्टी वन रुपी डिफरेंस विच इज क्रिएटेड दिस इज द टोटल ऑल टोटल डिफरेंस विच इज देयर इफ आई जस्ट लुक एट द सेकेंड ईयर सेकेंड ईयर डिफर सॉरी थर्ड ईयर द थर्ड ईयर डिफरेंस इज ट्वेंटी वन रुपी द सेकेंड ईयर डिफरेंस इज टेन रुपी सो द टोटल डिफरेंस विच इज क्रिएटेड इज अ थर्टी वन रुपी डिफरेंस सो इफ आई जस्ट लुक एट इट दिस ट्वेंटी वन रुपी डिफरेंस इज बेसिकली बिकॉज ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट ऑन द टेन ऑन द फर्स्ट ईयर इंटरेस्ट एंड इंटरेस्ट ऑन द सेकेंड ईयर इंटरेस्ट दिस कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट्स टू द डिफरेंस सिमिलरली इन द थर्ड ईयर दिस थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री वन डिफरेंस विच इज देयर इज बेसिकली बिकॉज ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट ऑन द फर्स्ट ईयर on the second year and on the third year interest the concept is interest on the previous interest which actually increases your value the total difference that is there after four year is of the difference of 64.1 second year there's a difference of 10 third year there's a difference of 21 fourth year there's a difference of 33 so if you look at it the difference is increasing every year compound interest and simple interest they will you know differ every year the difference being the highest in the last year If I have to look at the formula for compound interest, compound interest, the amount in case of compound interest will be equal to principal, which will be the initial value into one plus r by hundred. One plus r by hundred is basically the multiplying factor with which we'll multiply the initial value to get to our final value. Since the multiplying factor remains the same because the rate remains the same, I raise it to a power t because the same thing is happening for t years. R is the rate and T is the time period in years. If I have to calculate simple interest, simple interest would be amount minus the principal. I know the formula for amount. I subtract the initial principal for it. That will give me my compound interest for what? T years. Now this compound interest will not be same every year, so cannot be divided equally among all the years. Unlike the case of simple interest. If the rates are changing every year, I will not be able to raise to the party. I'll be multiplying different multiplying factors for each year to get to a final value. So initial value into the factor for first year, the factor for second year, the factor for third year would give me my amount at the end of n years. Subtract principal from it to get to a value of your compound interest. So if you basically look at it, principal into one plus r by hundred gives you the amount for the first year. amount for the first year act as a principal for second year so the second year multiplying factor is applied on the answer for the first year if i apply this this will be the answer for the second year which will act as the initial principal for the third year and so on so if i compare uh, simple interest and compound interest simple interest for and compound interest for the second year for this for second year or for two years it's why there's the same thing because simple interest for the first year remains same so the difference between two years or the second year simple interest could be remembered as uh, could be remembered as p r square by 100 or p r by 100 whole square similarly for three years the difference between the simple interest and the compound interest would be given by the amount for 3 years minus the principal ci for 3 years minus the si for 3 years so i will let back to this answer let's look at some of the example that will help us to understand the concept better given that si is equal si for second year is 600 ci for second year is 660 find the P and R find the principal and the rate. I know SI for all the years remain the same. So SI for the first year will also be six hundred. That means CI for the first year 
will also be 600 and in general I know it is equal to PR by 100. Now what is given to me? It is given to me that the CI for second year minus SI for second year is 60 and I remember the formula PR by 100 whole square. Let me split the formula as PR by 100 and R by 100. Now this value I can treat it as the simple interest for first year or the simple interest for second year which is given to me as 600 into R by 100 equals to 60. Just solving this I will get the value of R as 10. So it's a 10% rate which is offered to me per annum. Putting it back into the equation, putting it back into the equation I get 60 is equal to P R by 100 whole square. So just solving it the value of P that you will get would be 6000. I hope the question is clear. Another question. Compound interest for the 7th year is 600. Compound interest for the 8th year is 660. Find the rate. Now if you remember, it is basically the interest on interest that creates the difference. So between the two interests that are there, CI for 7 and CI for 8, it's a 60 rupee difference. This difference will be basically because of the interest on the previous interests. So what was the what is the previous interest? Previous interest is 600 sorry 600 the difference is 60 r percent on 600 is 60 you get the value of r if you solve it out as 10 percent when we are talking about the case of si the initial money that you have started up with obviously grows let's understand the growth pattern in case of si with the help of a single example i have invested some money and after 8 years, I am getting double of it. So this is the principle, this is the amount after 8 years that I have. So that means in 8 years, I have accrued an interest, interest if I solve it, I have accrued an interest which is equal to amount minus principle which is equal to P. So I have got P rupees more in 8 years. Now in case of simple interest, the interest remains same. So that means in next 8 years, I will still earn the same interest. That means it will be P. I am not looking into account what will be the what will be the principle. I will be looking at it what will be the initial principle. So initial principle is P. I will get my interest on P. If the rates are not changing, the interest will not change. So interest for first 8 years is P. For next 8 years will still be P. For next 8 years again P. I'll get 4p for next 8 years again p for next 8 years again p for next 8 years again p and for next 8 years again p so there's a equal you know interest which is added over a same period of time so my money if I start with p my money grows to 8 times in a period of 56 years so that means 8 eight years time span and there are seven such periods that are happening if i take the same case in case of ci let's look at it it's only taking me 24 years whereas it was 56 years in case of si in case of pi in case of uh, uh, ci p becomes double of it in the eight years so that means the money becomes double in 8 years. For the next 8 years, this will be treated as the principal and the money will become double. For next 8 years, this will be treated as principal and the money will become double. As simple as that. So in a time span of 24 years, the money becomes 8 times the original. Unlike the case of SI where it took 56 years for the same growth. Let's understand uh, it with the help of an example. The amount gets doubled in 6 years. So let me you have P and in 6 years it becomes 2P. So and this is happening at SI. Similar question that means P is added in 6 years. If you want P to give you a value of 8P. So that means 7P has to be added. P is getting added in 6 years. Next P, next 6 years P, next 6 years P. 7p it will take me 7 into 6 42 years for the money 
to become eight times of the original. Same case in CI. P becomes two P in six years. Two P will become four P in another six years. Four P will become eight P in another six years. So total, it is taking me only eighteen years for the money to become eight times of the original. Look at the time difference which is there. If you want. you can remember the simple formulas for the same however without the formulas the question turns out to be simpler uh, the amount get x time in t years so it was something like the amount becomes double in 6 years in how many years it will get y time so that means p will become 8p in how many years so basically the formula would be y minus 1 y minus 1 Beans eight minus one. I am negating the principal and I am only looking at the interest. This is seven. This is one. So this is plus p. This is plus seven p. So I need seven times. The time will be multiplied with seven. The initial time frame will be multiplied by seven to give me my answer. In case of CI, uh, the shortcut formula is I basically look at. I'll look at the same example. I'll basically look at the two things, which is eight and two. Which power of two is equal to eight? This is the value of n. X raised to power n is equal to y. This is the original amount. This is the final amount. Which power of original is equal to final is what I have to look cube. So my final answer will be my final answer will be this value into the time taken in the original. Case. So the time taken in the original case was, if you remember, six years. So my answer will be eighteen years. Another very very important concept is compounding frequency. Compounding frequency means how frequently the compounding is done. The cases that we have done till now have been the cases of annual compounding. That means the interest is calculated per year and added into your account at the end of the year. If I talk about a compounding frequency in a semi-annual mode, that means interest will not be calculated at the end of the year. but interest will be calculated at the end of 6 months and added to my account let's understand it with the help of an example i'm taking the same example i've started with 1000 rupees the rate is 10% per annum and the time is 4 years but the compounding now is happening semi annually so if the compounding is happening semi annually i will convert this per annum rate into a semi annum rate the rate would be divided by the number of time periods in a year In a year, you have two semi-annuals, so a rate of per annum would be divided by two to give you a rate per semi-annum. The questions that you know the the things have to be solved in a similar manner. So for the first half year, your principal will be thousand. Your interest will be ten percent on thousand. So your interest that you will get would be fifty rupees, added it to your account after six months. So in the beginning of the seventh month. the amount in your account which will be treated as principal will not be 1000 it will be 1050 for the next 6 months the principal will be 1050 the interest of 10% will be calculated on 1050 and added it to my account so if i just go with this the interest that i will get which is a 5% interest per annum will be calculated on 1050 which turns out to be 52.5 added into my account for 1102 similarly for the beginning of the second year that means for the first half of the second year the amount that will act as a principal will be 1102 my interest will be on that whatever is the interest will be added into my account at the end of the 18 months or one and a half year which will act as a principal which will act as a principal for the beginning of the second half of the second year so similarly the amounts will be calculated based upon the money that is there in my account the same thing i am now doing in a quarterly thing quarter means the rate of 10% would be converted into a quarterly rate in a year there are four quarters so this rate would be divided equally among four quarters the the rate that i get is a 2.5% rate which is a per quarter rate 
in the first quarter my principal will be 1000 i'll get my interest of 2.2.5% on 1000 added into my account for the beginning of the second quarter my principal will change and therefore my interest and therefore my account if you look at at the beginning of each quarter the principal in my account is increasing and therefore the interest goes on increasing if i compare the case at the end of one year at the end of one year four quarters means one year the money that i had in a compounding case was 1100 the money that i had in a previous case of semi annual compounding was 1102 the case in case of quarterly is more than the annual compounding and semi annual compounding similarly this figure of 1218 is more in comparison to the annual compounding amount that will i'll have in my account which is 1210 and the semi annual compounding amount that i will have so the more the compounding frequency the more is the interest and therefore the more the amount that you end up with the higher the compounding frequency the better it is for the end user because it will be more interest that the user would be able to get out of the investment that he or she has made if i if i look at a case of monthly compounding the amount at the end of one year and two year would be even much more than the case of quarterly so in case you know the compounding is not happening annually the rate has to be divided with the number of time periods if it's a semi annual rate n will be 2 if it is a quarterly compounding n will be 4 if it is a monthly compounding n will be 12 if it's a weekly it will be you know 52 and if it's daily it depends upon the year it could be 365 and 366 depending upon the leap year amount principal plus simple interest simple interest this r is per annum it is it is you know calculated as per the compounding frequency in case of ci also this r will not be the one that i will take because this rate is getting changed this value of time would also be converted into the number of time periods so if i talk about a quarter the compounding is not happening once in a year it is happening four times in a year so t was a number of years would be compound would be converted into number of quarters the rate would be a quarterly rate and the time would also be in the time periods where you know i am calculating the compounding frequency the last thing that we'll be discussing uh, in this topic would be simple annual growth rate and compounded annual growth rate a uh, very important from a data interpretation point of view because you get a lot of questions on it sagr and cagr are simple applications of simple interest rate and compound interest rate so if you remember simple interest p plus p into r into 100 so if with this value amount will be taken as the final value p will be taken as principal if i calculate this rate this rate following the formula of simple interest is known as simple annual growth rate a minus p this is basically the simple interest divided with the principal into 100 over t would give me my value of r it's a simple you know formula thing in case of compounded annual growth rate it is basically the formula of compound interest that i will be using which is amount is equal to principal into 1 plus r by 100 raised to power t the r value that i could get filling in the values of amount and the principal is the r that is referred to as compounded annual growth rate